Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Time to do another video on the discrete audio amplifier project. I was going to get into measuring the distortion. However, there's a couple changes, change slash repair, I guess I should call it, that I wanted to discuss before I get on to that. Someone in the comment section asked about a resistor I had in the circuit and I probably shouldn't have it in there so sat down and thought about it and uh, decided to remove a resistor from the circuit. That would be this resistor right here. This is called a base stopper resistor. It's physically close to the base of this input transistor in the differential pair. And its purpose is to help prevent RF from getting into the amplifier. Even though we already have a low-pass filter, we have this 1K and 220 picofarad capacitor forming a low-pass. But some designers will have another resistor close to the base of this transistor, which works with the capacitance in the transistor to form another low-pass filter. Somebody contacted me in the comment section and asked why do I have that there and that it can cause problems. When you do add a part to a circuit to fix one problem, you have to look at the consequences of doing that. Usually when you fix one thing, you can create new problems. One problem this can cause is a shift in the output DC offset voltage. So you have some current flowing through this transistor here. Some will flow through the emitter to base junction and out this way. That's why you have this 22K resistor here. You know, this allows the bias current to reach ground and also sets the ground reference point for the amplifier. However, when you add another resistor in series with that, it increases it a little bit, changing that current, which will shift your DC offset a little bit. In this case, it's only 4 or 5 millivolts. It's not a big deal, but it does have an effect. Another problem it can cause is additional noise. If you work with op amps, you know that resistors can contribute noise to a circuit. However, relative to this 22K, this is 1K, so its contribution in noise is not going to be that much. It's a very minor thing, but it's something to consider. This input stage is not within the feedback loop, so any noise that it generates is going to get, get into this amplifier and be amplified along with the signal. So what I want to do is just take this out. So what I see happening, this 1K resistor will now be moved here. So it might have some base stopper effect. Plus these devices will also be connected here because it's on the same node. So it does make sense not to have that there. Plus my input section will have shield grounds around it, and it'll be physically small. So I don't see RF ingress to be a big problem with this amplifier. So we'll strike this resistor from the schematic. The next thing I did is to replace this transistor on the differential input stage. The reason for doing that is I thought I had matched these up when I built the amp. And they could have been, but I might have damaged this transistor when I was first constructing this amplifier. If you remember from a few videos ago, the output offset voltage was like minus 36 or 37 millivolts. Nothing serious, but you know it's under 50 millivolts, and that's not too bad. But it really should be better than that. It'd be nice to be under 20, 25 millivolts. Well, taking out this resistor did help a little bit. When I replaced this transistor, it brought the output offset voltage to 10 millivolts, which is pretty good. Here's the transistor I pulled out of the circuit. And if we check its gain, I'm getting 144. Most of these transistors, let me put that back in the shot, I have a few here stuck to the magnet. Let's put these in here. Of course, my fingers are heating them up. Most of these seem to read around 170, 172 or so. 
Let's try a couple of them here. One seventy-five. I'll try one more. Well, I'm not sure which one I just did, but I'll try this one. One seventy-seven. Try it again. One seventy-six. Probably cooling off from touching it. Yeah, most of these are measuring. And the 170 to 170 range. But this one, I was only getting 140, what was it here? 144. So a couple things could be happening here. It just could be an oddball transistor. Or potentially was damaged when I was constructing this amplifier. If you follow the series and remember... When I was first constructing this board, I had this transistor disconnected at the base. What that does is pull the output stage to the positive rail because this current source is now biasing this output, these upper output transistors on and pulling it to the positive rail because there's nothing down here to counterbalance that. So what happens is that voltage is also on this feedback loop back to the input stage. This capacitor charges up, taking this divider resistor out of the equation. With a high voltage here, you end up with the output voltage here of 30, 35 volts, whatever it was. And the emitter is close to ground. If you remember, this resistor here is what sets the ground point or ground reference point. So this is close to zero. This would be a base emitter junction drop, small drop across this resistor here. So this is, you know, about 0.7 volts above ground. Well, this is at 35 volts. That means you're going to reverse bias this junction. The current's going to go around like this. And as you might remember, the base to emitter junction can only withstand a few volts of reverse bias. Uh, five, maybe up to nine volts or so. And that fairly low current through this 22k resistor the transistor doesn't get blown out but it can affect the gain that's what I've read it can damage the gain characteristics of that transistor so that's could be what happened here okay so I have the amplifier hooked up to the power supply set to its maximum voltage I'm shorting the input lines together just using the socket board, one of the strips to short it. And here is the output offset voltage now. It's running about 9 millivolts, which is pretty decent. So, you know, it's a lot less than that negative 37 volts as before. So this is one reason why it's pretty important to match the transistors. So now I want to do another demonstration. We can unmatch these transistors you know, right here. These are the input transistors here. These are the current mirrors. You can see they're physically located close to each other. Here are the differential input transistors. These are part of the current mirror. I said in the beginning of this project I wasn't going to match transistors. I was mainly talking about the output transistors. That's important to make sure you get them from the same bin. But anyhow, back to this. I'm going to apply some heat and watch how it changes the output offset voltage. So I'll just put my finger on one of these. See how it's changing. Now if I move to the other transistor, I should go in the opposite direction. See, now it's pulling it down. So just putting my finger affects the heats up the transistor and affects its gain. Let me try the current mirror transistor. You see those are pretty touchy as well. Let me go back and do the other current mirror transistor, and it pulls it in the opposite direction as well. So both those differential input transistors and their current mirror transistors are 
pretty sensitive to their gain. So changes in their temperature will affect them somewhat. Plus having the gain matched can improve the total harmonic distortion. Okay, so I want to try an experiment now. I want to take a good transistor and we'll check the gain. And you can see here it says it's 173. So I'll flip it around. Probably going to get warm for my fingers. Give me a different result. Flipping it around to see if the gain changes in this little tester. Probably got warmed up a little bit. I'll let it cool off and test again. So then I'll uh, hook it up on a breadboard and reverse bias the junction here with small amount of current. About the same that would have happened in that uh, episode with the amplifier. And by the way, I know what happened because I put my meter on it and noticed that I had a reverse bias going on there. And after that test, I'll put it back in this tester and see if the gain had been affected any. So let's see what it is now. So yeah, it's uh, cooled off, so I'm getting, I think it's the same gain I got when it was flipped around. Just to see if there's consistency with this little tester here. Okay, so I'll put it on the breadboard and reverse bias the junctions. Okay, here's the circuit. Ignore all this stuff. It's not part of this demonstration. Here's the transistor under test. I have an LED 1K resistor. The LED just lights up when current starts flowing enough. LEDs are pretty sensitive. Okay, the LED is starting to light up. Right now, the transistor is forward biased. The base to emitter junction is forward biased. This is P and P, so I have the circuit set up like this to forward bias that junction. And the LED is lit up, and it starts around 500 or so millivolts as we turn up the current. You can see it goes up to around 700 and something. Oh, the meter wants to turn off. 700 and uh, some odd millivolts. So now I'll reverse the voltage. Of course, I'll have to turn the LED around and reverse the bias on the base emitter junction. Okay, so now I flip the supply leads around and, of course, the LED. So the positive power supply lead is on the base. The negative is connected down here. I flip the LED around. And I'll just increase this voltage, and we'll see when the LED begins to light. It's going much higher. Well, we're still in the millivolt range. Okay, now we're at 3 volts. Looks like the LED is starting to light, so that junction is conducting. And it really breaks over right around, see it just suddenly gets brighter around 8 volts. The meter is connected across the base emitter junctions, not the entire supply because the LED would you know add some voltage drop to that and the resistor as well so you can see this point where it breaks over and conducts really hard is around 8 volts, 8.4 volts or so so I'll turn it up so just a few milliamps are flowing and I'll just let it set for a while. I'll come back and test this transistor to see if it had an effect on its gain. Okay, it's been a little while now. Let's take this out and put it in here. Check it. It's dropped to 139. I did check it a couple times. I let it run for a few minutes, uh, probably a little less than 10 minutes. And I did check it every now and then, and it seemed to drop a little more and more over time. So it seems to be a time-related thing. Nothing to do with heat. I'm only running this thing at 
like one milliamp of reverse current. Let's hit it again here. My finger might have warmed up the transistor. Yeah, 139 still. I like to flip it around just in case this little tester is wonky. That same 139. So yeah, reverse biasing the base to emitter junction has damaged this transistor and that its gain is somewhat less now. So that's what happened to my amp. I had those transistors matched initially. That mistake causing that reverse bias condition damaged the amplifier. Now you can add some protective elements to prevent that from happening. For one thing, this capacitor can be protected. If something happens to the output stage and it's pulled to the negative rail, negative voltage is going to be here relative to ground. You can use a non-polarized capacitor or you can use a diode in parallel with that so a large negative voltage can never appear across the capacitor plates. So what if this output was stuck to the positive rail? You could run into that issue with the reverse biasing. Well you can also add a second diode in also in parallel with that capacitor anti-parallel with the other diode so if it goes positive this will still conduct that you'll still get the voltage divider effect here and it won't allow a high voltage to build up which could cause reverse conduction situation am I gonna put those in this amplifier I decided against it it's just more parts and unless something happens to this amplifier there won't be an issue in normal operation. You know, this is designed to work with AC voltages. You can do all kinds of things to foolproof the amplifier, but under normal operating conditions, it's not really necessary. For one thing, you never want to put DC into this amplifier. You know, some people say, oh, these capacitors are bad, I'm going to take it out. Well, if you put DC in and slam the output to one of the rails, it's not going to be good for the speaker, first off. And, but, and those uh, voltages can cause damage in the amplifier. Why doesn't it happen with an AC signal? Because with the changing voltage across this capacitor, that oh, meter shut off, the capacitor is going to conduct that current. It's never going to allow that to reach a high level. And that's one issue with these amplifiers where they're pretty much DC coupled throughout. If the output transistor shorts and pulls the output to one of the supply rails, it could cause damage upstream. You know, it could cause high current to flow from a previous stage, or it can cause reverse bias across a electrolytic capacitor or a transistor. But like I say in normal operating condition including clipping with this amplifier I don't foresee any such issue arising like I say never remove this capacitor here always feed in an AC signal well that was an interesting test we'll carry on in the next video by the way I have the easy amp designed just have to run a few tests in simulation here and uh, see if it's good enough to actually build and uh, you know, finish this amplifier up here and get working on the John Audio Tech Easy Amp. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Okay, I got home. And there's a kitty. I think I gotta turn off the alarm. Oh my! Hello. Hey, did you miss me? Huh? Oh, he is loud. He is loud. Three and a half days. I left the kitty all by himself. All by himself. 
Just got home from Michigan. Here he is. The snicker. The snicker. The snicker. The snicker. Snicker. Oh, I knew it. Yeah, kitty do it fine. I don't like leaving my kitty. Yeah, but I gotta get away sometimes, you know? I just gotta get away. Didn't even touch his toys. Still sitting there. Uh, still has some food. Still has some water. Oh, look at this mess. Look at that mess, Snickers. He paws it out of there. Still, still a whole bunch in there. What about this? That's dry. This one, he doesn't drink out of much. Things almost full. Well, I made it back home.